Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is another video going over the Merced Utils library. Um, I added a whole bunch of stuff to it, so we're gonna go over it. Um, so let me open up my little test program here. Okay. So a couple things I added. I added another class. So last time we talked about the Fetcher class, which was for fetching API calls. Now I created what's called PowerSet because there was things that I didn't really, like. I like sets because you can eliminate duplicates and there's a lot of really cool functions you can do with them as illustrated in the MDN documentation but they're not actually implemented in the JavaScript so I implemented those functions and created this class that kind of gives you the benefit of arrays and sets in one in the sense that it'll persistently keep no duplicates but also gives you access to all the fun array functions that you're you know and love and also a few new functions uh, for working with sets so let's just let's, let's, uh, create a few. So we'll say, hey, const pset one equals a new, and the way, you, where the power set comes from, you're gonna destructure it from the utils function. So again, everything, pretty much everything in here that's not part of the super array methods come, is destructured from the utils function. So, okay, so that's how you bring it into your, your software. So a new power set, and this new power set, it takes in an array in the constructor. So we'll say one, two, three, four, and then we will copy and paste that. So we'll make a second set. And we're gonna get P set two. And this will make three, four, five, six. Okay, so first is just console log so you can see what you get. So you see what the properties are of a power set. Console.log set one. So a power set really has two properties. Uh, oh, I have to actually type in the thing. Node function.js. So basically it, it holds an array of the array you put in minus duplicates. So if you put in an array with duplicates, it'll, it'll remove them. And it holds a version of the set, uh, a set version of the data you pass in. So that way, you have access to both and you can have access to any. So you could just access everything by doing stuff like this dot R or not this dot R. I could be like P set one dot R dot map. Although the problem with that is if you start altering um, the R property, it doesn't automatically update the set property. So what I did is if you do want to access one of the array methods, I have, I, I got you covered. Okay. So for example, if you wanted to use pop, okay, what you would do is you would use p set, okay, my power set, and then there's a function called dot r meth, meaning array method. First, you're gonna pass in a string for which method you wanna use, so I wanna use pop. And second, you can pass a string for any arguments you wanna pass in. I'm passing in an empty string because there's no arguments for pop. So I hit save. That should just return me the four. That's gonna be popped at the end of the array. And just to kind of illustrate that it worked, we will also console log p set one. So you can see that the four was moved and that both properties were adjusted. Okay, so I do pop p set one. Now let's run the function node. Actually, let's do this. And you see it removes four. And see the it's four has been removed from the set and the array. And the cool thing is if you use an array function and somehow it would add a duplicate. So let's say I tried to push I try to push three into the array, which would mean there'd be a duplicate three, it should prevent that duplicate from happening. It'll basically not work. I mean it'll push it in there, but it'll remove it right away. See? So it'll always keep it. So you can use all these array methods, but it'll persistently keep it without duplicates and keep both the array and the set within the object updated so that we have access to both. And literally you can just use any array method and just in by this manner. So even all the super array methods are usable here because you just put the name of the function, assuming that you've ran the super array function to implement all those methods. Okay. Nice. Okay, so that's the power set, and or at least that's the, 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 the first part. 
it also has a bunch of methods that are for working with the two sets. Um, so for example, there he is, is super set, I'm pretty sure. Let me also open up the actual where I have these written, utility.js. Okay, is super set, yep. And what this does, and if this looks familiar from the MDN documentation for sets, it is. I just basically took the functions that they implemented in the docs and implemented them into this power set because they're good functions and they should be available to you. So I'm just going to change this for a second. Okay, and then just delete five and six for a moment. And basically what it's going to do is going to check whether the power set, you have to pass in a power set. So you have to... So it checks whether the power set I pass in, whether the power set that I'm invoking this on, so pset1, is it a superset of pset2? And it'll return me true or false, meaning does it include those properties and more? True, okay? Now if I were to fix that array back to what it was before, and then do pset2, it's gonna give me false because it's not a superset of that. False. Perfect. Okie dokie. Then if I wanted to combine them, and what this does, it doesn't mutate the existing power sets. It returns a new power set that is a combination of the two. So if I do this, it'll just give me a new power set. That is a combination of both. And again, no duplicates. Very nice. Okay, and then if I want to see there is few of these. Um, the next one I want to do is intersection. Now what intersection does, it shows you what's in common between the two. So P, where they intersect, P set two. So it'll return you a power set of the intersected elements. So see, I got a power set of three and four because they both share three and four. Then there is symmetric difference. What symmetric difference does is it will take a look at what's not the same between both arrays and or I mean both power sets and give you a power set with the elements that are not that are unique to both in the sense that it's on one not the other so basically the only thing they share is three and four so I should get a power set with everything but three and four And see, I get everything but three and four. I get one, two, because that's not in the other one. And I get five and six, because that's not in the other one. So that's symmetric difference. And then there's just difference. Okay, and that just basically shows you what's not, what's in the first array, what's in your array, your power set, the original power set, power set one, that's not in the passed in power set. So if I do that, so we do no function that. Yes, it'll just be one and two, because one and two is in power set one, and that's the only thing that's only in power set one. So yeah, so that's that's the power of the power set. You have access to all the array methods plus these cool comparison methods, and um, eliminates duplicates if you need to do that, and um, it's pretty neat. So that's the power set. Now back to more array methods because we added a whole bunch. So let me close that out and open up my super array file so I can show all the methods that we created. So I think where we left off, we did the maps. That was the last video. Squish is where we started. Okay, so squish. So let me make an array. Const my r equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and if I do 10, save. So now if I do dot squish, so if I do my r dot squish, basically what it does, it's kind of like squashing your array. So literally it's pushing and popping at the same time. So it's gonna take out the 10 and the one. That's literally what it does. And it returns you the 10 and the one, returns you the two elements it removes. My r dot squish is an extra parentheses, save. Okay, node function.js, and see, returns you the one and the 10. So that actually mutates the array. Oop, not that. Um, back to super array. After squish, we have shuff, which is 
a immutable shuffle, meaning it doesn't shuffle the array that exists. It's going to return you a shuffled array. I could add a mutable shuffle, but I think this does the job. I mean, you can do like my r equals my r dot shuff if you really want. Okay, my r dot shuff. And that'll return a shuffled version of the array, but not change the original array. See, it's different every time, but so the array elements just shuffle together. Cool. Then we keep going down, shuff, uh, two strings. So here we have a bunch of typecasting stuff. So basically what this does, two strings, changes all the elements to strings. Okay. And let's just save that and show you that that works. See, now they're all strings. And if I do two numbers or two nums, that's going to change them to numbers. So it should change it back to numbers. Save. Oh, didn't save. Save. Changes it back to numbers. And if I do dot two bools, two bools, it's going to it's going to evaluate each one as a boolean and return me an array of those results. True, 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 true. Let me add zero to the array. Save. Since zero is a falsy value. See, we get one false. True, 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 true. Okay, so those have their uses. Um, so that's there. Keep going there. I want to go here. Two bools. And then we have our immutable pop. So you have pop, shift, all that stuff is already in uh, JavaScript but they're mutable, they actually mutate the array. So I've made versions of them that don't mutate the array. So they just return you the array with the action taken, but without changing the original array. So if we do um, my r dot i pop, meaning immutable pop, it should return us everything but the 10, because it pops the 10 off. There we go. And if I do I shift, immutable shift, it's the same thing except it takes the zero out. It's going to take the front of the array. And if I want to do immutable push, so I can push a value onto the array. So we'll say 11. It'll push 11 on there and return me the array. OK, and if I do immutable on shift, it'll add the 11 to the beginning of the array and return me the new array. But again, it's not mutating the original array. And just to make that clear, let's actually log the original array as well right afterwards. OK, so see, the original array is still intact. OK, and the last one is immutable splice. So I want to splice everywhere from the second element, and I want to take out five elements. So second element's here, so one, two, three, four, five. So all this should be taken out. So it should be zero, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, so let's do it. Let me save it. There you go, see, zero, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, but the original array is still intact. So um, yeah, that's, that's it. That's that's that's. I think that's pretty much everything I've added. I push, I splice. I mean, there will be more, but that's that's where we're at. So check that out. Merced utils. Again, pretty easy to bring in everything in there because basically you bring in these two functions, super array and utils. Super array just gets run and adds all those methods to arrays, and then utils you can destruct destructure the tools that you want. Okay. Um, which you know utils includes the random number functions the fetcher object, the power set object, lots of cool stuff. More stuff that will be added down the road. So enjoy. I'll see you guys later on. Mm -hmm.